What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. You know, um, I wanted to make a podcast on how we have to stick with the Word of God. And of course, you've probably heard this before, but it's very important as you could be possibly listening to multiple ministers and after a while on certain topics, you may feel confused and you may feel as if you um, on certain topics don't know the right way, the right course of action because you just feel confused about a certain topic. And so, um, you know, in the word of God, it brings out uh, especially in the book of First John and then also in the Gospels, how we don't necessarily need someone to teach us because the Holy Spirit teaches us as we are exposed to the Word of God. And, you know, um, as we receive the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ, you know, um, you know, the word of God can shape a lot of what we think. And so um, when you have, you know, certain ministries that, you know, on certain topics veer off from what the word of God teaches, even though it may or may not be, you know, a uh, very important issue as far as what they're talking about, maybe it could be, you know, whether to take communion every, you know, Sunday or, you know, uh, once a month or, you know, something minuscule. But there's also bigger topics of, you know, how we should either continue in sin or not continue in sin. Or, you know, whether a person should get baptized or not get baptized. You know, those type of issues, you know, sticking with what the word of God tells us to do and, you know, filtering it through, you know, especially the words of Jesus, especially, you know, um, the words of the New Testament, which, you know, to some people, you know, like Peter was saying that Paul's words can be somewhat confusing and um i don't know if paul you know he probably didn't want to come off that way because even in scripture it says you know pray for me that i can uh speak the words clearly that god has given him and so even he kind of struggled with you know giving a right message but you know we don't just even paul said you don't just say, you know, oh, I follow only Jesus or I follow only Paul or I follow only this other minister. You know, it's everyone should be, you know, supposedly, even though this doesn't necessarily happen in reality, but everyone should be speaking the same thing and having the same mindset towards the things of God because we're only using the Bible. And I think that is a good indicator of false teaching when you you have certain ministries who are pushing another book that they have or you know they they have this other book that is supplemental to the word of God. And hopefully what, you know, I'm saying doesn't mean, you know, never read any books or anything like that. No, you know, books have a good place. But, you know, I've seen certain ministries say that this other book that, you know, they created is the word of God, too. And so they tried, you know, even though I found out later that, you know, that ministry isn't really Christian, you know, it's another religion, even though they kind of, you know, have Jesus <clears throat> as part of their religion, but it's not Christianity. And so um, for those that are, 
you know, really seeking what the truth is, I think, you know, not to say that we shouldn't have ministers and pastors in our life, you know, because, you know, hey, we we can benefit from them, you know, and um, I think sometimes we can get upset at ministers because we're expecting them to, you know, tell us what is in the word of God. I think a lot of people, you know, just get their word from a pastor or minister and they never really read the Bible for themselves. You know, I know when I was in my teens, you know, 15, 16, you know, 17, you know, I would go to church and go to Bible study and, you know, I never really read the Bible for myself other than, you know, scriptures that would pop up on screen and, you know, never really opened the Bible until I got older. And so I think a lot of people possibly, you know, of course, God knows everyone, you know, I only know a few people here or there and stories that I've heard. But, you know, there could be people that you know, don't necessarily read the word of God for themselves, but they go to church, but, you know, you know, they're, they're Christian, but they never really study the word of God for themselves. And so, you know, they're relying on their pastor or minister to kind of give a word, give a word for them. And a lot of ministers and pastors will say, that what they're saying is the word of God, even though I don't think that's what some of them mean. You know, they're just saying that, hey, I'm speaking from the Bible. But some ministers will say, you know, what I say is the word of God, you know. And so, you know, I think definitely, you know, we should take heed to not... um, you know, solely relying on, you know, um, a minister or pastor to shape what we think, you know, I think we have to use the scriptures to build our convictions. Now, there could be possibly something that we think, you know, that is wrong, that, you know, a pastor could shed light on that, you know, um, you know, specific things about tithing or um, specific things about, you know, um, whether you should give to the poor or not, Uh, you know, because I've heard a pastor say, oh, you know, don't give to people on the street, give to organizations. And see, those type of things are that person's opinion, you know, And of course, we're all entitled to our opinion. You know, I'm not not trying to bash what he believes necessarily. But, you know, in the word of God, you know, there's no problem with, you know, giving to someone on the street or something like that. And, you know, that's just one example. But, um, you know, when you have... um, you know, all these competing voices, you know, in the ministry, you know, and in the church, I think it's so important to, you know, build our convictions on what scripture actually says, you know, when talking about the law, you know, some people will really bring out, you know, Romans and Galatians, but then they overlook the book of James where it says, that we should speak and act as those who will be judged by the law. And so, um, you know, even though we're not under the law, you know, that is, you know, those teachings are what Peter is talking about, in my opinion, and it could be other things too. Obviously, Peter doesn't necessarily give specifics about what he's talking about but you know those scriptures are things that people can twist you know and when you read the book of James it even gives it starts to list some of the commandments and it says 
So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law. And so, um, you know, people can twist the scriptures and even say, you know, well, we're not under the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments don't apply to you. Well, you know, I can, from my own understanding, which we shouldn't lean on, but I'm just saying from my understanding that I've gotten from scripture, I can kind of, you know, understand what they're trying to say is that, you know, we follow Jesus and, you know, we're not necessarily, um, you know, in the old covenant, you know, and that's what they're trying to say. But you see someone who doesn't, you know, understand someone who doesn't you know, study the scriptures, you know, which I believe are a lot of people when they hear a pastor saying something like, oh, you don't have to listen to the Ten Commandments. You know, we're not under the Ten Commandments. Well, you know, they could misunderstand that and start to sin and think that sin is okay because they're like, you know, oh, we're not under the Ten Commandments, and they they're going off of what they heard instead of actually studying the scriptures, which says that you know those things are still wrong, and that's just one example. But I think that's you know kind of a big example in scripture that you know just like in the Book of Jude, it says you know that the false teachers have turned the grace of God into a um, place for, in the New King James, um, it says a place for sensuality or um, the other word in, I think that is used in that book is lasciviousness, which basically is, you know, a, they've turned the grace of God into this, you know, hey, these sins are okay and you know, sexual sin is okay. And, you know, they kind of feed into this really relaxed type of Christianity. Now, I try not to come off condemning, you know, in my videos, because, you know, the Bible does say there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But that is not taking into account everything else that the Bible says, you know, you can't necessarily just take one verse and build a whole ministry behind that. You know, you have to also look at, it says that be careful how you walk. You know, it says that, you know, those who practice the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. And, you know, and so people, I think, try to really focus in on one particular verse and they're like, oh, there's no condemnation. So, you know, hey, I don't need to preach on sin or, you know, I don't need to tell people the dangers of sin, you know, because, hey, you're going to sin anyway. And so, you know just whatever happens, happens. And I'll just preach, you know, faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's not taking into account everything that the scriptures say. And so I think what my point is that it's so important for us to really study to show ourselves approved and really, you know, get our convictions from what the word of God says You may have to read another translation. You know, you may have to mix and max between two translations to, you know, get greater understanding, you know, about certain words that are used. You know, um, you may have to look up certain definitions of words in the scriptures, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, if you don't know what immorality means, you know, you may have to look at that up, that word up in the dictionary. But, um, you know, when talking about, you know, other topics like if aliens exist or if, 
you know, um, there are there's life on another planet. And, you know, you have to stick with what the word of God says, which is, you know, it says that we people are the only thing that God created and animals. And it also says those that are in heaven are created, which are in the heavens, you know, that no one is able to get to, you know, outside of God's God bringing them, you know, because, you know, Jesus said you can't even get to heaven except by me, by Jesus Christ. And so um, you have people trying to spin these other you know, especially when they get into, you know, this scientific type of spin where they try to, you know, say that the Bible and science agree, you know, and, you know, I get it that there are other aspects of life, you know, that like, uh, you know, someone invented a car or someone, you know, made houses, building buildings more, uh, acceptable or I mean more uh, better through different technology and I get that there is you know more knowledge out there but you know um, when you try to you know describe the origins of life and different things like that you know and pastors or ministers are you know uh, bringing in unbelievers theories and unbelievers uh, spin on life, you know, and what is in the universe, then, you know, you're really running into trouble. And so we have to stick with what the word of God says. And if it doesn't say anything about a certain topic, then don't just assume, oh, maybe or maybe not. It's more of a no, those things are either don't exist or you know, uh, if it's about certain topics, you know, you can't even preach it like it is possibly true. You know, there's another teaching out there that, you know, there was a, a creation before Adam and Eve, you know, and I don't know if anyone's heard that, but they try to say that, you know, Adam and Eve were, you know, not God's first creation, that there was a pre adamic race, you know, that's what they call it. You know, there were people before Adam and Eve and then God, you know, uh, destroyed them. And so now he made Adam and Eve and he's on his second plan. And so, you know, you have all these different things that kind of uh, feed into certain pastors and ministers ministry. And, you know, it, is false teaching, you know, and, you know, if the Bible doesn't talk about it, you know, I get that certain things, you know, the Bible may not necessarily mention, but also, you know, you have to not fill in those blanks with your own theories of, you know, oh, because the Bible said, you know, the wording of the Bible is, you know, this certain way. And so, oh, yeah, I'm just going to assume that there were people before Adam and Eve. You know, I think sometimes, you know, just like Jesus said, you know, people are actually, in my opinion, you know, dissecting the word of God too much, you know, um, that, you know, Jesus even said, you search the scriptures thinking that in them you have eternal life, but you refuse to come to me so that you may have life. And so in that passage of scripture, I believe Jesus is saying, you know, one, people are not reading the word of God correctly, but they also are refusing to come to Jesus because they think, oh, you know, I read the Bible and I follow the Bible and, you know, I don't need Jesus, you know, and that's what the Pharisees were, were saying. And they were saying, no, we follow Moses. And so, you know, we're saved. So anyway, thanks so much for listening to this podcast. You know, hopefully you got something from it that, you know, 
sticking with the word of God instead of, you know, letting another minister shape things in your mind that the word of God doesn't say. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't listen to ministers because I enjoy listening to ministers, you know, and I think what their ministry says is true sometimes. But I think sometimes in our ministry, we can, you know, start adding different things to the word of God and we have to, you know, get away from that. And so um, I, I sometimes throw out a theory out there about, you know, uh, the tree of life or, you know, heaven, you know, and we're all entitled to our opinion or our interpretation. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we can't start teaching people as if what we're saying is fact. And so um, thanks so much. And I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.